Good morning, everyone. Mike McConville here of Stratford, Ontario, Canada. I'm going to do a quick dedicated tutorial on how to adjust the sliding action of the sled for the neck surgery cap. Yeah, for the last few guys that ordered, it'll just sort of bring you up to speed on exactly how you get that nice smooth motion without any tightness or looseness. So let me take the sled off for a second. This is the dedicated box that I shipped the NSK in. So in order for it to fit without the box being unwieldy or too large, so these two cinch pins are actually put on in reverse so that they go to the inside of the main frame and it makes the whole unit a little bit more compact for shipping. So what that means for you guys is there's going to be a little bit of assembly required. We're going to remove these two cinch pins that are put on purposely in reverse to make the whole shipping thing a little more reasonable. We'll get this one off as well. Wind that rubber tip off. So now we'll reinstall the cinch pins. I'm going to leave this one fully assembled so Jody can just take it home. It'll be ready to go. But for you guys that get your kits, you, there's a little bit of setup involved here. So what we have here is a quarter twenty threaded stringer. On both sides of the frame we have compression washers. There's a little bit of rubber under there, rubber line washer. That gives us just enough play to be able to move that in increments of a thousandth of an inch. That tightened it up considerably. If I wanted to loosen it off, I could just do this. So you want to take the time when you get your jig with no router, just the sled itself, and get that nice smooth action all the way along. So the same applies for this end of the frame. If need be, I can bring that up to midpoint. I just kind of finger tighten that initially. Put my sled on and just check that action. Pretty close to perfect. But what So for the sake of illustration, once again, I got those rubber lined washers. I'm going to tighten that ever so slightly and what that is doing is it's pulling the walls together and that is how you're adjusting the sliding action of the sled on the rails. So I do this again, put that on, that's a little bit tight, that's okay. I go into the inside nut and just give it a couple of turns, we're talking increments of a thousandth of an inch. Good. So in this instance, because most of the cutting is going to be done at this steeper end, you sweep down and by the time you get to this distance here, the cutter has cleared the back of the neck. So those indexing slots in the rail actually complete the structural integrity of this whole thing. And this is how you get a nice cut with no chatter and no shake. You don't want it so tight that you got a reef on it to push it, but what we're after is nice sliding action, no apparent looseness or tightness. The sled is engaged firmly between the aluminum walls of the jig, and this gives us a perfect cut every time. Every time. The other thing I got to mention too is the actual wood itself is going to wear a little bit, so the more you use the jig, the smoother it will get. You need to take the time. When you first get the NSK, you want to do all of your adjustments initially because once it's set, as I pointed out in the other videos, you have a, an actual indexing pin. When you look through these windows that are cut into the walls of the jig, you can trace the trajectory of that cutter. You do that visual check with the guitar actually clamped in the whole jig, and then you know exactly what the trajectory of that cutter is going to be, where it starts its cut, where it goes to its deepest point, and where it exits, long before you flick that switch on the router. So when you do get the jig, take your time, set it up for that initial cut that first time through, and then you'll have that perfect sliding action, and you'll get a perfect cut every time. So for you guys that have the latest jig, this is actually the seventh generation. <laughs> Over the last 20 years it's been refined several times. So that elliptical cut essentially allows you to do any guitar neck on the planet. Once you've got that cinching motion of the rails nice and smooth and solid, that allows you to kind of set up very quickly to do any angle of headstock from 10 degrees to 17 degrees. So I send out 
the 10 step point by point spec sheet. I also send, I think I've got 14 videos now, you know, on various guitars because there is variations on theme and I will continue to produce videos. I also include a multi-page pictorial that also walks you through step by step how to make the splines, how to check the spline fit with the spline tracer plate before you actually glue everything in. And I also cover the worst case scenario where you have a headstock that is completely severed. Because in some cases, you set the jig up, you make one cut, you glue in one spline, let it sit overnight, then you come back the next day, you just rotate it 180, put it back in the jig, and you make your second cut. If there are any more questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Cheers. Good luck.